also on CNN, Hawaii official who confirmed Obama birth certificate dies in crash. That's the story we were covering earlier. Now it's maintained as breaking news. Loretta Fuddy, the Hawaii official who confirmed the authenticity of President Obama's birth record in Hawaii, died Wednesday night in a small plane crash. The aircraft, with nine passengers on board, crashed into the ocean about a mile off Kalapapa, Malakoi, on Wednesday, the U.S. Coast Guard said. The other eight people survived. Petty Officer Stephen Woodbury said one person swam ashore, a Maui Fire Department helicopter picked up four, and a Coast Guard helicopter rescued three. But he was director of the state's health department. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, the somebody else in that plane um, could have been uh, helping that uh, end game there, it sounds right. like. It sounds a lot like Ted Stevens. He was the only uh, casualty in that plane crash as well. And, and as our listeners know, Teddy Stevens was the number two pedophile for the longest time. There was always Joseph Biden... Ted Stevens and Patrick Leahy side by side, neck and neck, uh, promoting this agenda through various councils and commissions and cashing in on, on human demise. And that is all changing at this time. Um, but it was very interesting for them to attempt on Ted Stevens to present him as a fall guy with the bridge to nowhere. And then when that didn't work, to turn the populace against him. Of course, he had a plane accident. And if, any, if everybody li remembers, you know, that was... Uh, a couple years ago, right after that, within two months, the prosecutor that was prosecuting Ted Stevens was also a fatality of his own hand suicide, they said. I mean, these presentations, they, they have no uh, qualms about how they're going to kill people. Um, they, they don't care. Everybody's a number, a numerical value on a spreadsheet, and they say that you know, at the level of the churches. What's your denomination? How much are you worth? What is your value? And that, that is according to fiscal policy. Yeah, well, there's a reason that Jesus hated organized religion. Absolutely. He said, take it to those who are least esteemed in the, in the church. First Corinthians 6, he said, don't, don't go in front of them. What are you doing patronizing those saints? And again, uh, Matthew 24, he went off on them. He says, woe well, unto you. Here you are, you sit at Moses' right hand. You're supposed to be sitting at God's right hand. What the hell are you doing? And, and, and you know. Yeah, I know but, people that are proud of sitting at the right hand of Moses. Right, because they have the priests interpreting the Bible for them. They go to church every day to get their daily dose of indoctrination to maintain them as corporate product. This Bitcoin thing is just crazier than a soup sandwich. The more I look at that, oh, I wanted getting to... people to buy into a complete concept. It's not even anything to do with anything other than belief, like a religion. Um, and Bitcoin's been taken over by the government, folks. Absolutely. They came in on federal seizure during the time that they were doing the show of the government shutdown. And the federal government seized Bitcoin. So, again, I have to reiterate here. And those that don't want this knowledge, you need to turn your radios off now because any private donations, any private funding, any amount of money that is being used to aid and abet the known enemy of humankind is aiding and embedding the known enemy of humankind. You are aiding and embedding the enemy of humanity. And if you are caught, you will be held accountable for these things. You are not to be funding corporate governance, you are not to be funding the federal government, which has seized Bitcoin. They seized Bitcoin way back at the government shutdown. Uh, government spies are forcing private email services to shut down because they can't spy on emails. No, you will not hide your emails from us. We are your government. Right, but see, that only scares like congressmen and attorneys. I don't care if anybody reads my emails because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not child trafficking. I'm not promoting child porn or anything else. This scares the public employees because they are the ones that are trafficking in children. They are the ones that are participating in all these things. They want their privacy. I don't care about privacy. We are under public law only. You can see everything that I do on any given moment in time. Facebook, YouTube, everywhere else, we are absolutely public law only. These privacy laws protect pedophiles, protect predators. Right. 
Right, I'm glad you cleared that up. Uh, UN global warming hoax is slowly dying. Let's see, UN slash Congress, because UN commissioned by Congress. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it was four degrees here this morning, which is kind of cool, uh, even for this area. Uh, I don't see that as a effect of global warming myself. Well, when you look at the concept of these isms, in any given market, you have, um, such as feminism, is used to redistribute the male. Uh, masculism is used to redistribute the female. Zionism redistributes Islamism. Islamism redistributes Zionism. Catholicism redistributes Judaism. When you come to the furthest extension of this system at play, they always, always, always employ agrarian economics, which is environmentalism. They did the same thing way back in Greece. You lay down the Athenian constitution. The Athenian constitution establishes what an individual is, creating individualism. Later on, they have some form of 14th Amendment, which is corporatism, or the person now being held as out to be a person. That is corporatism. To redistribute corporatism, they are employing environmentalism. That is the federal state attempting to take over the national states. And let me repeat that in a different way. The federal government has employed environmentalism against each county, against each state by which to raise the states and redistribute those assets back into the federal state. We are offering any law enforcement that is willing to adhere to and enforce public law that you are not going to be left alone. You will have funding. Just contact us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next, this is right into uh, another headline. U.S. police have killed over 5,000 civilians since 9-11. Right. Now, notice how that headline blames the police. It says nothing about corporate counsel. Right, exactly. Another situation that we've been trying to hammer home here because... Well, I've read their d directives. The um, Department of Justice under the uh, um, one of their programs, the Violence Against Women Act, uh, Chapter 3, it is the directives for judges, prosecutors, and law enforcement. And it maintains in there, if you are arresting too many males, uh, you might be being biased and, and you're to uh, change your ways. Otherwise, your department, your corporation is not going to get these special drawing rights. So at the inception of what they think is their function, they're be already being directed to target males, leave the female specialized, no matter what you witness. and and. When they promote such directives to law enforcement, you can see that as clear as day in action because here's a law enforcement official. He's the one on the scenes. He's the one that's putting his life in danger. Or she's the one that's putting her life in danger on the front lines. And they're witnessing, you know, perhaps the female beating the male's head in, beating the children. But because of policy and agenda handed down by the Department of Justice through the Judiciary Act and the Attorney General's General Counsel, uh, Corporate Counsel, because of those directives, police and law enforcement now are, are stopping those arrests. And that it's mandatory that they arrest somebody, so they always grab the guy. Well, that's removal of the male from the ability to protect his family from predation by the state. It's the cops on the front lines, but they're being directed by not only policy, policy and agenda, but also by those corporate counsel attorneys that are telling them, you know, how much we need to bring in, but not in those manners. They're just directing law enforcement um, as law enforcement, and, and law enforcement is assuming that they're protecting human beings. And it's absolutely horrifying to read their actual directives, you know, UN um, directives as well as the uh, actions of Congress and uh, you know, these treaties that they have with each other, these these trade agreements that they have with each other to discharge congressional bankruptcy is like, uh, that is absolutely abhorrent to any and all realm of any being or any state of being. I mean, it's, it's just foul. It makes me sick. 